Fredston Simpson. Now I'm here to talk to you about television. When discussing the invention of the television, no one man can claim full credit for the device, but several key names have put certain dents in its creation. In 1925, Scottish inventor John Logie Baird, incidentally who the Logie Awards were named after, displayed the world's first television system to the public at a London shopping centre. This system, however, was not the typical high-tech television set we are accustomed to today, but instead, images generated by a rotating disc. Flash forward to the distant future, 1927, American scientist Philo Farnsworth completed the blueprints to the first fully functioning television that we are familiar with today. Other companies and corporations were also experimenting with television sets and broadcasting, and in 1928, General Electric aired the world's first television drama called The Queen's Messenger. company British Gaumont bought a license from Farnsworth to start producing the device he had created. In that time frame, television broadcasts had begun internationally, such as this heartwarming first ever German broadcast in 1935. <laughs> in den Fernsehstuben Groß Berlin mit dem deutschen Gruß Heil Hitler. <laughs> Delightful. In 1939, the Radio Corporation of America also purchased a license from Farnsworth and they too began making quality televisions for the world. <laughs> And so a new American industry has been born. Television is taking its place as another important and vital contribution to our daily lives. It is a modern miracle, a new public service produced by combining RCA laboratory science with manufacturing skill. The research problem of yesterday is the radio marvel of today. Another milestone of progress has been passed and science has made a reality of the age-old dream of pictures from the sky. In the early 1940s, the television played an important part in the Second World War, where many countries used the medium to inform the public of their war efforts. However, the television was also used by the German government for a naughty thing we call propaganda. <laughs> Previous to this, there were two vastly different models operating within the UK and the US. The UK's television was operated by the government, which derived its money from viewer license fees. The US, however, allowed for privately owned networks, which would gain their revenue from advertising. The Menzies government opted to go for the British model, allowing for one station per capita to broadcast television. The government, however, did not have enough time to put the act into practice before being defeated in the 1949 election. Although the affordability of the television placed a heavy factor on its success in Australia, the first television network, Channel 9, opened in 1956 with these key words. 
Good evening and welcome to television. From then on, tell... From then on, television was beginning to experience a rapid expansion with stations popping up in every capital as well as regional areas. From here, Australia began to witness quality television around the clock, such as this delightful 1960s Vegemite ad. <laughs> Well, this woman from the 1970s game show, Newlyweds. Five point questions. Girls, tell me where specifically is the weirdest place that you personally, girls, have ever gotten the urge to make whoopee? Olga? Um. <laughs> Go ahead. In the. Everybody needs good neighbors with a little understanding. You can find the perfect blend. Over the six decades of television existence, it has had a major impact on the social climate of the world. Television offered people an unseen form of communication with broadcasts of television shows, commercials and news breaking transatlantic barriers at instant speed. Each of these communicative forms then formed a time capsule conserving culture, language and historical context within the one frame. Television has been listed as having both a positive and negative aspect on the structure of society and its individuals. Current research has discovered those who are deprived or void of human relationships can often develop a pseudo-relationship between the television characters. This helps inhibit the psychological damage done to those who are often in remote isolation, such as farmers or ice road truckers. The search for new love begins in 2011. The farmer wants a wife. The new season only on Channel 9. And of course, television does have its educational purposes, with many kindergartens, schools and universities using television programs and videos to educate the public on certain issues or topics, as is demonstrated by this progressive film on homosexuality. In the middle of the 20th century in the United States of America, hundreds and hundreds of teenage boys and girls are becoming homosexual every year. It's fantastic, it's unbelievable, and it's terrible, but it's true. The government maintains two hospitals just to treat homosexuals. Lexington, Kentucky, and Fort Worth, Texas. It used to be a rare thing for a juvenile to be admitted, but look at these recent figures. And remember, these are only confirmed homosexuals. Despite the positive uses of television, there are negative implications it can have. This is evident with this generation's overexposure to violence. It has been said that the rise in teenage crime often coincides with the frequency on violence on today's program. Carpet day! Huh? No! <laughs> Another negative factor about television is its glorification of stupidity and poor role models. Is this chicken what I have or is this fish? I know it's tuna but it, it says chicken by the sea. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> what? Don't make fun of me right now, I'm not in the mood. You act like you've never had tuna before. I've had tuna fish, like, sandwiches and stuff like this. Maybe you and I have eaten tuna like this before. Why is it called chicken 
By the sea or in the sea? Chicken of the sea is the brand. Oh. You know, because a lot of people eat tuna, it's like a lot of people eat chicken. So it's like the chicken of the sea. Okay, I understand that. I was, I read it wrong. So as you see, the development of the television has left an unprecedented print on the structure of our society. Whether it's something as simple as an advertisement or as complex as a documentary, the television has ingrained itself into our lives forever. And it's unlikely we'll ever see a form of communication as valuable again. Except for the internet. That's way better. I'm James Frankenstein. Good night.